Hey, what's up, Graceway High School family? It's Pastor Brandon here with you. Thank you so much for joining us this week for our online high school experience. Hey, we're gonna jump into this lesson, so let's get into it now. God, hear God. I pray that or ask that you hear my prayers. Guide me to know how to do this and speak to you. I just, I don't know how to do this. Can you even hear me right now? I'm so grateful. Thank you. Hey, please know I appreciate all you bless me. Things just don't feel I don't know how to I pray that you'll help me here, guide me here to know how to show up. I just don't feel how I should. Please God, help me I'm be more Thank like you for ever loving people. people. It's just I pray it's that hard. or ask that you hear my prayers. Isn't it true that the idea of prayer can sometimes seem very intimidating? You know, for a long time, that's how I felt about prayer. Like I was going to be put on the spot to say prayer in front of everyone and I was going to have to use these big fancy words and in the moment when the stakes were high, and I would not get get it right. I would not say the right things or, or I wouldn't communicate correctly. And I also want you to think about something that, that I found that has helped me out a ton when I think about this concept of prayer. The whole idea begins with an old school phone. Now, now a lot of you may not have seen an old school phone, have ever used an old school phone. It's called a landline, something that was connected to the wall and, and you had to push the buttons and or sometimes even a rotary phone where you had to spin the, the, the knob around to be able to get to the right number to, to dial. And, and for, for some of us, we, we think about it how we would use that landline when we were in trouble or when we needed help. And we would go to that only in those instances or only for those occasions. And, and you're thinking that sounds really awful that you had to go to the go to the wall and and for those of us that have used these type of landlines before they had the long cords on it where you can go talk in other rooms so you're not being bugged by your siblings and stuff like that it sounds very awful but nothing else uh was available at the time because a landline was the only thing that you could use to be able to communicate to people during that time and and it could only do one thing and that's make phone calls so just think about it you couldn't text you couldn't be on instagram you couldn't be on tiktok you couldn't be taking videos you couldn't be on youtube i mean you could receive one call or you can make a call and that's about it. Now, most of us, we treat prayer like a landline and we treat prayer like uh, for a time of emergencies and we only go to prayer when it's one of those help me type of things. And, and a lot of us, we also have a smartphone as well. So we may not have seen a landline, but we have a smartphone and, and we use a smartphone to be able to, to text, to take pictures, take videos, to scroll through social media, to do all these things. And, and we would think that it would be kind of useless to have a smartphone if the only thing that we were using it for was to make phone calls once or to be able to receive phone calls once as well. What if we're missing out uh, on what prayer really is? And what if we're missing out um, if we're only treating prayer like a landline? And, and where do we start? You might be wondering, where do we start even with prayer? And how do we treat prayer like it's something more than just a help me type of thing? And what are other ways that you can pray besides asking for help all the time? And, and and we've been in a conversation uh, the last couple of weeks, and we've been talking about thoughts and prayers, and we've been talking about um, this concept of prayer and how it's a communication, and it's having a conversation with the Lord as well. And, and I want to look at some a passage in Scripture where Jesus is speaking to us in the most famous message he's ever given, and it was considered the Sermon on the Mount. And in this passage, Jesus is telling us how to pray. And in this passage in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13, he starts off by saying this, pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation. So it's important to note that right before Jesus shared this prayer, he pointed out some other things about praying that he was he was wanting us to understand during this sermon. And he encouraged us to do a few different things. Number one, he encouraged us to be real. Be real when we're praying and be real when we're having a conversation with the Lord. The Lord knows our hearts and he knows the things that we're going through. So be real. And then he wants us to be honest. Be honest with where you're at. Be honest with your struggles. Be honest with, with your questions. Be honest with, with your needs. Be honest with your wants as well. And then he says, be consistent. Be consistent in your prayer life. And, and be consistent in, and not just once in a while or once in a week or, or just when you're blessing your food and asking the Lord not to allow it to be poisoned. Like, be consistent 
daily in your prayer life. And, and you see, Jesus gave us this, this model of how to pray, not necessarily what to pray. He gave us this model of how to pray to show us the heart that he wants us to have be, behind our prayers. And he wants us to see that, that we can have how to pray in this as well. And it boils down to a few different words. Number one, it boils down to thanks. Telling God what you're thankful for. And we can never run out of things of what we are thankful for. Number two, to say please. To please express our needs to God. Express your needs to God and what those things are that you are expecting from him. And then to say sorry. To say sorry and let God know how and what you are sorry for and where you need forgiveness as well. So here's the thing that we have to know that we really want you to understand about prayer is that prayer isn't about the words that you say. It's about the way that you pray. It's not about the words that you say, but it's the way you pray. And whether you pray a lot or you pray a little bit, whether it's frustrating for you uh, or you've had a frustrating experience with um, prayer or even a confusing one, whether it intimidates you or it seems like something that, that you can do, remember that that you have a way forward. You have a way to move forward even in prayer. And, and even in that, if you don't get anything else out of this, I want you to understand that you have to find your way to pray. Find your way to pray. It's so crucial and so important that you find your way to pray. And I want to give you a few tools to be able to find your way to pray. Number one, once again, start with thanks. Start with thanking God for who he is, not necessarily just the things that he has done, but for who he is. And I believe that we can never run out of things to be thankful for or to be grateful for and just train your brain to see things that are that are not just good all the time, but things that, that are not not so good as well. And train your brain uh, to think about the good things and the bad things and train your brain to thank God um, all the time. And it will change the way you see and experience the word of God as well. The second thing, once again, is, is please start with please asking God for help. It, it comes naturally for some of us, but then uh, others of us, we have too much pride to even ask for help. We think that we can do it in and of ourselves and we, we can do it on our own. We think we're stronger or macho. We can do whatever we want in and of our own might. But listen, there comes a point in time where, where that power and that strength and that energy will run out as well. So we have to learn to take all things that we fear or that we are worried about to God. And it shows us or it shows him a level of trust that we have in him. It shows that we consider God a, a safe place and safe enough to handle all the things that feel overwhelming in our lives. And then once again, tell God, sorry, telling God that we're sorry for something um, is another way to pray. And this is a big deal because it, it helps us become more aware of the choices that we have made. It helps us become more aware of the decisions that we have made as well. And we can be more intentional in our decisions and learn to see that our choices were either hurtful or they were helpful. So um, by telling God we're sorry, it also gives us a chance to experience God's mercy, to experience his forgiveness and, and his never ending love as well. So when we make a habit out of acknowledging that um, we've gotten things wrong, uh, we, we're connecting with a God who accepts us no matter what. And then to add a few more things to those first three things, we can we can uh, go to God with wow. We can pray with a wow sense of factor or wow sense of energy, emotion, because sometimes we see or experience something that just makes us feel, feel like saying wow and makes us excited about or even uh, just, just have the sense of awe of what we just experienced. And we don't even necessarily have the words beside, um, beside wow to put around what we just this experience. And it's just an experience of being in shock or being in awe, being surprised or amazed at what we see or feel in the world. So connection with God, it doesn't have to be or saying, be doing or saying anything. It could just be recognizing the bigness of who God is. And then you also can have this how or huh factor, like, huh? Like, is that for real, God? Like we can go to God with questions and we can connect with him by bringing him our questions and our concerns as well. Anything that feels confusing or doesn't make sense, we can go to God with those things, whether that's a relative who is sick or a friend that's uh, gossiping about you or giving you the silent treatment or why we feel like we don't have anyone that gets us or understands us or why understanding uh, math, it feels like an impossibility, like God can take it. So we can go to him with our questions and being honest with our questions 
questions and where we're at in our life, it's it's good. It take it gives us time to take time to figure out what is really confusing us, and it brings it when we bring it to God in prayer. It is helpful for us as well. So when we put words around what we're questioning, it it gives us clarity and it helps us connect to God. So no matter how you practice praying, no matter how you practice communicating with God, no matter what form it takes, the the best thing that you can decide is to commit to it, to commit to it and actually commit to it, not just for one day, commit to it daily and and multiple times a day and have a conversation. You don't have to just get on your face before the Lord and find a closet to go into to pray. You can communicate to him wherever you're at, even in the car, you can communicate with him in the shower, you communicate with him um, in class, you can communicate with wherever you are at, you can just commit to it and communicate to the Lord. Why? Because it's important that you find your way to pray. So one of the things that can make the process of learning prayer uh, so much easier is knowing that you aren't alone in figuring it out. You're not alone in figuring out how to pray um, as well, which is why we believe that that it's important for you to get connected. It's important for you to have people like leaders and mentors and and small group leaders that can challenge you and encourage you in this journey as well. So if you were sure that God was listening to you, what would you say? What would you say? And, And that's just what I want to close out by asking you. If you were sure that God was listening to you, what would you say and how would you pray? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that we've been able to spend together. God, I pray for my friends and the ones that, that are having a hard time, um, God, with this concept of prayer, God. I just pray that you would just be with them, God, and open up not just the physical eyes, but open up the eyes of their heart to see you in a real way, in a powerful way, God, that, that prayer is having communication and having a conversation with you as well. And sometimes it's more than just speaking or doing, but it's just um, sitting and listening as well, Lord. So God, as we have talked about how we should pray and and ways that we can uh, start a a consistent prayer life, God, I pray that you give these students and my friends and family, God, just the the capacity and give them the the willingness and boldness to to start somewhere and start sometime. Um, Why not here and why not right now, Lord? So be with them, God. Give them the, the boldness, give them the courage, God. Give them the strength, God, and give him the energy as well, Lord, and we'll be mindful to give you all the glory, the honor, and praise in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank God. God bless you guys. Once again, thank you so much for joining us this week. If you're wondering what the next steps might look like for you and your relationship with God, maybe you're wanting to give your heart to the Lord for the first time or get baptized or even go through growth track, would you text next steps to this number on the screen, 816-722-2442. Once again, it's next steps, one word to 816-722-2442 and someone will be in contact with you as well. Hey, we hope to see you sometime soon at midweek. We start at 630. God bless you.